Rapid Monkey Music Show. Today we have an atrophy singer, Ryan Zimmerman. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good. I'm glad you, I'm glad you come on. I said earlier before the show, I've been digging this album. I listen to it a lot. Heavy, Thank fast. Thank you so much. I love the fast. I love the fact you honor the sound of the band. You're not trying to change it and over modernize it. Like there's, there's growth in the songs, but you're not trying to change the band. No, you know, I, I, yeah, the, happens, I didn't want so. to do that at all. <laughs> you know, it does. It does. If you're not careful, it can, uh, it can really mess things up, and you definitely don't want to do that on a comeback album. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we're very careful about, um, you know, keeping with the old, uh, making it a little more modern, and uh, keeping all the great elements that made us who we are. Well, I, I think, and that's a generationally, because I'm like 53. I mean, a lot of bands that were heavier and thrashier back then, the guitars, the tones, the vocals, they all have their own sounds. And I'm not trying to sound like an old person, but like a lot of sounds now are kind of like a wall of sound now, where every band had their own sound, sort of. You guys had your own sound. So the fact you guys are keeping that sound, to me, is very refreshing. I love that sound. I love that fresh, the guitars sound a little different. Everything sounds a little different, you know. Right. It's fantastic, you and, know. And and I think that comes with uh, modern recordings. Uh, in fact, we used three other producers on this record, and each one of them, and they're all great producers, but it wasn't the sound that we were looking for because mm -hmm. once you start sampling the drums and doing other tweaks on the guitars and the vocals, it just sounds too different. It, it just yeah. doesn't have that beautiful sound that we we all loved it and everybody got away from it and i don't know why i don't know either because it was very fresh it's very original and that's one of the things i feel is missing lately in, in metal in the past x amount of years because it is still good songs and there's great players but there's a certain sound that just the guitars had the tone it just felt different it wasn't overdone and this album has it and i went back i listened i listened to this album a few times i went back i wanted to compare the production to the old the new and the songwriting <clears throat> And um, what's really great is it, it's it's like it's like it's a crisp version of what you guys had for a sound. You know what I mean? It's like everything is like tightened yeah. up and cleaned up and shined up a little better. I mean, but you guys have not lost a step. Your voice hasn't lost anything, which is pretty amazing. Like as we get older, I talk to a lot of singers; their voices are going. Sure. You know, let's actually. I want to start there. How do you keep your voice going? I mean, that's pretty amazing. And so what I did was. When uh, I left the metal scene and became a father and a uh, respected uh, member of society, I started uh, learning how to sing properly. Mm -hmm. I worked with a chorus director and I did some acapella stuff um, oh. where it's just the voices and it teaches you how to really use your diaphragm and how to breathe properly. And uh, I think the more you strain your vocals, the more damage you do, you get nodes because, yeah. I mean, they're literally two pieces of skin. And if you, you try to push yourself too hard, if you're sick. Um, so just being mindful of that and uh, learning how to sing correctly, I think, has uh, helped me. I mean, you haven't got like even that. I mean, have you practiced a lot more, though, too, to keep your voice as strong? I mean, it's not like you're singing ballads. I mean, this is a strong. <laughs> I mean, your vocals are very powerful. Yeah, I think actually I've used I'm using a lot more power than I used to. Mm -hmm. um, instead of holding back a little bit of not trying to be too too powerful, um, you know, I kind of know where I am now as far as uh, maturity goes and what I can and cannot do. So uh, I, I like to push myself a little bit more uh, to make it a little more forceful and aggressive sounding. Okay, that might be why it feels more full sounding to me. I thought it was more of the production. The difference of the vocals is because the way you're singing now, probably full chest is probably sounding, you know, larger and fuller. It's the same voice, um, but it just feels bigger almost like. Yeah, so one of the things that I was able to do on this record that I wasn't able to do back then mm -hmm. is when uh, you go to a studio, you know, you have all your stuff that you're going to do, but you all, that tick, tick, tick is going off on that, on the clock and your day ends that day. You have no time to go back and refresh or add or put in uh, extra tracks. 
Yeah. And so, so recording at home now has afforded me that pleasure to do that. Um, maybe a little bit different layering. I don't like put seven tracks or anything like that, but there's some key points in the song where you want it to be more full. Yeah. And uh, ha have a little more, a little more kick to it. Well, it it shows, and I mean, it, don't get me wrong. I love the first two albums. I loved your voice then. It's like it's you know, it's not like there's anything wrong. I just notice there's a difference in production, and like at this point in the game, where I hear so many albums, and we you know, metal's changed so much. You, I'm very aware of how things in production have changed. So, sure, what was the, the band itself has been doing stuff besides this album? There's an album coming out uh, March first, right? The first is Asylum. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, 15. My bad. I'm sorry, I look at my notes. Yeah. Sister, my bad. So 15, Asylum. I've heard it. It's fantastic. I encourage everybody to get it the first day, listen to it, stream it, whatever. Exactly. The links the links will be underneath the show. Go right to the site and you know go to all the, all the right places. I'll have it on the, the podcast and YouTube. Um, but to that point, you have done some other stuff prior to this. You guys were kind of together. If you could just do like a small mini catch-up for the yeah. people that weren't aware of you. In the meantime, what, like you guys yeah, had a couple so... of albums at the beginning in the 80s, but like metal got weird and everyone got left behind and then you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying I like, yeah, I was like, I was like it, a little catch up for a few people that haven't been you know on the internet like me you know a music nerd just I, yeah and i i consider myself a music nerd as well so in two, about 1990 ish um we had you know the great grunge uh thing that <laughs> happened and it took uh, music over my storm and it literally wiped off hair metal and grunge metal and I'm sorry, uh, thrash metal. Yeah. And it just literally wiped that out. And it was really odd how it did it. Um, a lot of the record companies were like, Ooh, look at that. It's the new shiny mm -hmm. thing. You know, they saw money. And so they weren't interested in, um, you know, th this type of music. So we broke up. My guitar player went to uh, medical school. He's now a, a, a doctor. He's an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Wow. And, um, yeah, he, he went off, and he had a full scholarship. And uh, we all accepted that, and we tried to stay together. But I was a new father, and I had to grow up and be a dad. And in 2015, uh, I received a phone call from a guy that – runs a Facebook page for our band. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, is there any way you guys would get back together just to do a show or something? I well, I don't know, maybe, you know. And uh, so we got offered the Maryland Death Fest, our first show back with Testament and Hyrax and The Haunted and all these other great bands, wow. uh, Nuclear Assault. So I decided, well, yeah, this is a, seems like a great opportunity. And, so we did it. We sounded really good. I was kind of surprised. And uh, and the offers kept coming. And so we, you know, we've been to China since then. And uh, we did a European tour in 2020. Sorry, 2021. And we got caught over there when, uh, with the coronavirus. Oh, boy. And uh, yeah, we were eight days into a 23 day tour, I believe. And uh, Trump said he was shutting things down. And you know, I, I knew something was going to change because the uh, the towns over there started boarding up. Essentially, is it in and China? Some of the no, we, in uh, uh, in we, Europe. Where, where were so, you? Here? I didn't know we were when it happened. Where, where, where were you? So we played in Germany. We played mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Um, let me see, Zurich. Uh, I can't think off the top of my head right now. Um, anyways, we, we started our tour. We were supposed to play France. That got canceled. Um, we wound up going to France anyways because we had some hotel rooms booked. And we just took it as a day off. So, yeah, it was uh, probably not a good time to be over there. And at, in 2021, uh, around June we were trying to make some more music uh, with my old bandmates and uh, it, it just wasn't going too well. And I, I kept trying to put vocals on the songs and it just, it didn't sound like atrophy anymore. 
And that really, really concerned me. And uh, I talked to the guys and I said, hey, this doesn't sound like atrophy, man. And they, you know, they spent quite a bit of time working on the songs. And they vehemently uh, just said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, these songs are great. You just have to sing them like you mean it. And I really did try. And uh, so after that, I uh, was going to do something different. And uh, I started working with my new guitar player, Mark Coughlin. And uh, I did a half of a song. I'm not kidding. And it got sent over to a guy named uh, Craig and Lum. And uh, he was trying to get us a record deal. And uh, I sent him four songs that the guys had did in the studio with my old band. And I, this one half of a song got slipped in there by mistake because it was a, I only had the, the date on the file. And he said, dude, what is that half a song you, you have there? I said, well, it's a new song I'm working on with uh, Mark. And he said, dude, finish that song and I'll put a lead on it if you want. And uh, I did, and he did, and uh, he sent it to a couple labels, and I got offered a record contract. So I figured, what the hell, man? I'm getting older, and uh, if I yeah. want to do it, I better do it. And I actually asked my old drummer, uh, Tim Kelly, if he wanted to be involved, and he declined. And I said, well, okay. So I uh, wrote this album with my friend Mark, my guitar player, and uh, here we are today. So that's interesting. So it actually sounds quite like the original sound. <laughs> what is that? It just really, you're the only original member singing on this room, right? On this album. So, yeah, it really sounds. Correct. Um, did, so, yeah, we put yeah. a lot of, put a lot of thought into it, obviously. The, the one of the things I heard, and, and maybe you can correct me, I could have sworn, did you guys have an album, a song out, like a single or something out, like around 2000? 17 or 18 did you put something out right. like on youtube like a, a just um maybe you, uh, we, you know what i'm talking about it's on no you're not something you did. yeah you're correct so in 2019 um we i asked the guys please please go in the studio and at least get me one good song and go in there and record it like you mean it and the guys went in the studio in tucson and recorded live and um, that's not exactly what I meant, but that's what I got. And so I took uh, one of the songs, and that's called Riptide. Yes, and yes. And in 2019, uh, we released that on just YouTube. And uh, and that was supposed to set up us going to Europe. You know, I didn't want to go to Europe. And, oh, look at us. You know, we're old men, and we did something 30 years ago musicians are supposed to be musicians and write constantly so um yeah and people seem to like it you know yeah they like the song and um but the other songs on there uh, didn't quite have the same sound i guess mm -hmm. or weren't as good I, I, I was excited i did come across at one point and then like like with everything else in the flood of the time period and, the, and covid and everything like i forgot all about it i was like oh i was excited and then i was like oh and then so much went on that I was like, wait yeah, a minute. Exactly. I could, they had a thing a lot before this. Like, it feels like this was like preemptive COVID attack, you know, the strike was. was getting ready. Okay. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going totally crazy. Just, just a little crazy. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so but, but when it comes down to it, so there is no animosity with the other band members, right? They were like, we're out of it, you know? Um, I think there is. So what I'll tell you the story real quick um yeah please i mean because so so the original drummer we got a new guitar player and a new uh, bass player and uh our new guitar player was with us for about three years and they had written like four four or five songs and um i said look guys covid's happening that the recording's not going well pre-production is not going well it's been three years. You guys have a few songs and I wanted to be involved from the writing from the get go mm -hmm. because I, I didn't want this to happen at all. 
you know, if I would have been involved from the beginning, I could have made the changes as we went and kind of polish it, like you said. Um, and they just kind of kept me out of the loop for a good year and a half. And then I was on purpose. Or was it just like, was it just like kind yeah. of like half ass? I, I, I think it was on purpose. I don't, okay. I don't honestly know. So when I heard the songs, I said, look, guys, I, these songs just, they don't fit. They just don't fit. I, I don't, I, and I actually said this, I said, Ronnie James Dio could sing these and he can't make them any better than what they are. This is the core product. And of course they took offense to it. They got mad at me and I wasn't trying to be mean or, you know, we have a band to run. We're trying to make atrophy music. It should sound like atrophy music. So I said, you guys should just find another singer. I'm out. So uh, Tim and the two new remaining members, uh, I waited about a month and I started seeing things on Facebook that they were going to be playing in Phoenix as mm -hmm. atrophy. And I called them up and I said, dude, what is going on? Oh, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. And I'm like, so what are you guys called? If you, you know, if you're not going to use the name. So when I left, I only had a couple conditions. Please don't use the name and don't, don't use the logo because it doesn't sound like atrophy. Anyways. So they came out as scars of atrophy and, uh, that kind of hurt me, actually. I was kind of bothered by that. And uh, when I was offered the deal, uh, I went to Tim and asked him if he wanted to play, and he said no. And I said, okay. You know, uh, I felt like I'd been more than patient, more than gracious. So I think there's a little hurt feeling over there uh, with Tim, maybe. Yeah. Well, and it's a great album. Is, so, no, it is it's a great album. I mean, do you have, was it your, you have ownership of the name? That, that, that's a thing. Well, yeah. I, I mean, me and Chris, my original okay. guitar player, started the band. Oh. And I drew the logo and, you know. Yeah. I, mean, you, you I don't want to. No. Bands fight about that nowadays. And the fact that you're the singer yeah. and you sound like the band, it's almost, you're not the and, same level as some of the other bands that are out there in the other rock and roll world that would be the same. That's why I asked because, you know, it becomes this, this gossip. And it's important to hear sure the 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 threat from the person of what you know what happened. It's not, it's not gossip, it's just um, that, here's a story. Uh, yeah, it, and sometimes, you know, and so you have to ask yourself, well, me and him are the original members, what changed? Well, the new members changed everything, they changed the sound. But you know, if he's gonna back them instead of backing me, that hurt. And the other thing is what you just said is if if uh I sound like atrophy. I can't help yeah. it. I just do, you know, and if you're going to throw another singer in now, it's going to sound completely different. Right. So I, you know, and I started playing guitar in this band um, originally before I sang. So I kind of know how things go um, and how they should sound. And for them not to use this wonderful tool that was right in front of them, uh, I still, I don't know why, but it it just was what it would, it is what it is, you know. Well, it's, it'd be hard it's so without hearing the music. No, no, it sounds right. But it sounds like it'd be jarring if it's you listen to you know the first two albums and you hear something new that sounds more modern, and you're like, so that's not my atrophy. I want to go see atrophy because that's the band. Like I said, that, there's a sound that you guys have that you've re retained. Yeah, it still sounds fresh to me, especially even fresher now because no one has that sound. There's even less bands that have that original metal thrash sound you know what i mean which is i can't i i, I, can't. I love that sound but I, I love the sound of all the bands from that, that genre that have kept their their, their sounds it's a sure. good sounds you have a good sound it's a good guitar tone it's just like a warm but it's, it's, it's a, a frequency where it kind of cuts through stuff your voice is right there you know it's just it's, it's just what you guys are and it would be very yeah it would be it's very just like a big jarring to not hear yeah, because you know, it's like a big new one would, would sound right. You know what I mean? If it wasn't right, a new yeah. one. Yeah, and 
it, and the weird thing is, is, you know, as we get older, we get stuck in our ways. I think my drummer was stuck in his ways about what he wanted for drum sound. You know, we don't have these great budgets like we used to, to go into just a drum studio where you can record the drum. So how are we going to achieve this? Well, I don't want samples. I hate sample drums. I love cymbals. I love all the norm, the warm tones of the drums. Right. I want to hear. I want to hear a rim shot. I want to hear everything that makes a real live band sound like a live band. Right. That's important to me. And so, yeah, it's just things like that. So it's good. So I mean, you're not talking out of tune. I mean, just that's just it's just facts of how you got from A to B because. Hearing it and seeing the different lineup changes, like I said, I've been aware of that. And I'm like, all right, people change, they grow, sometimes whatever changes. So it's nice. It's just it's like a, a real just musical change within the band. And some people wanted a sound and they didn't, you know. And you're honoring what you like, which is your voice and the sound. You know, that, that's just what yeah. it is. And the proofs in the pudding, as they would say, as the kids would say, you know, as yeah. Bill Cosby would say, the proofs in the pudding because this album, like I said, it really steps in right, you know, above the quality of the other two, but as good or better. I mean, we all, well, thank we, you all very much. we fall in love. You know, we all have our favorite we fall in love with the early uh, early albums. But I gotta tell you, I say, oh, this album's been just really it pounds. It's so good. Um let's talk about some of the, the song titles and some of the like the lyrics you came up with. It's pretty aggressive. It, was it poured out of you from like yeah COVID or just song ideas or just concept for each song or was it like an overall feeling, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so COVID was a very inter interesting time in history. And bring, being a writer of the style that we're in, uh, there was an uprising going on, you know, with shit. Portland was on. People are taking wow. over police stations. Antifa. What the hell's Antifa? And where the fuck did it, excuse me, where yeah. did it come from? Um you know, all these things that were happening and, you know, the coronavirus and the million man marches that were going on, it, it's like the whole world seemed like it was falling apart. And it was such a poignant time in history. So I, I pulled a lot of that uh, inspiration, what was going on. And so the, the first single that we released, The Punishment for All, I'm sitting in my living room watching an attempted insurrection of our government, which is a democracy, which United States to me is one of the finest countries in the world. I don't care what anybody says that we started as a democracy and to watch these guys try to do what they were doing was almost unbearable to watch i was just like what the hell is going on right now and so i came up with the song punishment for all i mean if if the left is over here and the right's over here and we don't give two craps about our constitution or democracy and so does the loudest voice win or the guy with the biggest gun like where does this end i that's so that's uh was That's the title of your next album. That's gonna be the title of your next album because to be seen, we're still in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we know? might be. These, yeah, these next nine yeah. months is gonna be a lot of material for, the, for a lot of people's new uh, album songs because, uh, yeah. you know, absolutely, pretty, pretty, pretty aggressive. I, you know, it feels like. Um, but I mean, the titles are pretty good. The Punisher for all, and you can throw some out to people that have it, right? high anxiety, sees a sorrow, distortion, bleeding out. These are really good song titles. Good metal titles. You know, good strong lyrics. The riffs are just. Slamming the drums, everything is so good. Well, when, thank so you, man. you. Yeah, you're welcome. So when you, you so you and you sat in with a guitar player and wrote it, and then from there did you guys, you know, take out the bare riffs and the vocals like scratch, and then throw, sit down and jam with the band. Like how was it put together? The sounds so like actually live, live sounding is what it sounds like to me. So we did the opposite. So what we started with was <clears throat> the riff and the fake drums just to line out the songs. Yeah. And then, it, like I said, my guitar player lives in Tucson. I live in Rogers, Arkansas. Those songs were then sent to me. 
And if I was okay with the song and everything layout, a lot of times I'll, I'll uh, rearrange the song or compose it a little differently. Take one of the riffs and just lengthen that and use that for uh, maybe the chorus or something like um, mm -hmm. five minutes to suicide. And, and, you know, there's a change in there where we have time in the drums and it just punches you in the chest. It's like, holy crap. So that's how we wrote the album was uh, digitally. But then, um, and, and that's the biggest compliment anyone can give us that it sounds like we played in a room together. We were oh. all in different places, but we all speak the same language of music. And so I know what he wants. He knows what I want. Our bass player, um, uh, our bass player, Josh, who's a malevolent creation. He's a, uh, he did five songs on the album. Like we, we all had this one minded goal to make mm -hmm. it sound exactly like we were in the same room. Our drummer is over in Germany. And once we get everything lined out the way we want it, you know, the, the sample drums, they're crap, whatever. But when you give them but to a live this drummer. It's a guiding track. Yeah, it's a guide, it's a guide track to just kind of keep the time Exactly. Out. What called it a uh, scratch track. Yeah. Um, we, put the, we put the live drums in kind of at the end. Mm -hmm. And that gives it that as long as you don't put samples on and use, uh, we use all DI tracks for this. So we didn't go in and just crank out a guitar. We used uh, amp sims for the actual sound. And there are actually atrophy sims or something close to it from oh, really? the first two albums. But this is, a, yeah, this is just a little bit different, but it still has that Mesa Boogie sound. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just uh, getting it. And then once you're in the studio, that's when you have to really pay attention to um, what the, the overall sound. So it, it was actually done back asswards of traditional stuff, but uh, since we're all pretty decent musicians, I think we can all uh, work together really well. And I think yeah. it shows within the album, you know? It does, and and I do want to say another thing, I, when I was listening to it a lot, probably the second or third time through, I mean, the guitars are very powerful. It's very much reminiscent of the first two. There's some really great, I want to give some, some um, props to Nathan. I mean, there's some great lead runs in there. It's just ripping and it stops and it just drops and it comes back again. There's like just some really just great guitar technique in there that it's just because yeah. it's a thrash style album, sometimes stuff gets overlooked because you just got loud, you know, like, dur, 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 dur. but if you put some good headphones on, which I tend to do the second or third time listening to a evaluation like this, you're going to hear some other stuff. And there's some nice little guitar leads in there that are kind of tucked away that you just don't always jump out right away, you know? So, so, you know, kudos to yeah, Nathan on some of those nice little details. Well, cool. I'll tell them that because uh, uh, we've got a lot of reviews and uh, people have said uh, wonderful things. And I am very blessed to have a very good, uh, amazing guitar team, uh, Nathan and uh, Mark. They're just, uh, man, they work good. Uh, the harmonies and shit they play together. Yeah. Man, so, so tasty. Damn. It's uh, hard kind of because I am made. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's hard I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on you. Just listening to the album, not knowing the guys, not knowing who does what, and knowing you work with Nathan, that's why I said that. But of course, you know, kudos to Mark, too. I mean, the guitar, all the guitar work on this album, I, I really love it. That's really such a great driving force for me. For you know, yes. I mean, like, once your vocals came in, I'm like, all right, you know, Brian sounds like Brian, maybe even a little bit better, like, bigger. All right, we're there. What's going on with guitars now? Because I know there's been a different lineup. What are we sounding like? Are we trying to sound like something? Are we honoring it? Are we a new band? What's going on? And then I heard this, and I was like, oh, we're pretty much, these songs can come in with other older songs interchangeably, but they're still new songs without with growth. You know what I'm saying? And that's, to have, you know, driving in both lanes like that is a challenge as a, as a musician that's had a long career, you know? And, and, and a songwriter going, as well. Yeah, as, right, right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, to, to, be, to, to have, to honor what you did and your fans and your music, and you like it, yeah. and to keep going, but also kind of challenge yourself. So, yep. you know, to do this at the same time is, you know, 
it can be a challenge. That's why bands always put albums out. They're like, I don't know what else I can do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if we're actually writing right now, and you know, my uh, Nathan says, "Oh, I, I think we can top this one," and I'm like, "Going, wow, okay." You know, that's going to be a huge challenge. But you know, like I said, I work with some really gifted people now, and uh, I think we might be able to do that. You know, I hope we can. It's a great album. I, I don't see why not. Because I think with the, the you notice it's because with the music, your voice is where it needs to be, and the musicianship is so good. You're welcome. I can I can hear that the growth of this kind of this of these of the musicians and the guitars and the lyrics and the vocals and everything can just keep growing because the band's kind of almost new in a way, but you kind of have a sound already. So really, yeah, yeah we, it, you can grow because it's, it's something new, something old at the same time. And it's yes. kind of fresh for some people. And you're and you're like re, re, re-energized, you know what I'm saying? Because Oh, I'm energized. You know, <laughs> no, but I'm yeah. saying but you don't you're not fighting against you're not push pull but it's other musicians about a sound. You're not fighting for sound you want. You're not pulling people. Right. You're running along with everybody to, to get to the goal now. Yes, Which puts exactly. a different tone in your in your in your step when you're trying to do music. You know what I mean? If you're not open and if you don't think you, you can trust the people you're writing with, you're not gonna be able to put your best out there. Absolutely. I, I agree with your statement 100%. It's that lovely chemistry yeah. that, you know, and some of the riffs he comes up with, um, I just, I, I can't wait to get to my computer. I, oh my God, I want to put down vocals on this. Mm-hmm. And to have that and have that excitement like I'm 19 again, man, mm-hmm. it's it's just magical, you know? It's easy to see. It's easy to hear. And the album is so fresh. And I, I'll be honest with you, I was like, I was hopeful. But, you know, you hear a lot. And it's like, what's going on with bands and certain members? And I, I hear this a lot because sometimes there are certain members that are just like telling the line. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't want to not yes. be in the band because it's like they don't want to miss the party, but they don't want to be involved. <laughs> like, it's like, Exi- you, you, you know, right. come on, just let, let, let the guys go on and do something or join in. But you can't, you're, you're holding them down. So to know that you had new members and you're, you're pushing forward. It's very exciting, you know, and and from that last yeah. track I heard, but but this is, you know, people have heard you've heard, they've heard a new single, but this blows away the other track you did in 2019. It's just it's just totally different. The whole album is just as good as the first single. I mean, it's just it rocks. Well, um, thank you so much. You're welcome. So how you guys how you doing the set list? How many songs you put in put in moving forward? Uh, we we were going to put two in initially, but I think we're going to throw in a third one. Because mm-hmm. I don't, uh, I I can't leave these songs out, man. They're so damn good that, you know, I want to share this new album with everybody. And I know everybody wants to hear the old stuff. So probably three is going to be a happy number to start with. I would even say, this might upset fans, maybe put a nice melody of some of the older songs together. Learn the whole album, yeah. swap out some of the new songs, and do a healthy dose <laughs> four or five new songs. I, you know, and this is probably the, the worst thing for people like, from because I am I did the nerd of music. I can listen to your old album, you know, whenever I want. I haven't sure. heard you do the lights, the new songs live. I'd like to see that. There's a balance. You have to know your audience. You have to respect them. I get that too. But if you're do a fan and, and you listen, you have fans, listen to Brian. He's excited about his music. This is why he's doing it. So if he's excited doing oh, music yeah. and he wants to do some new songs, that's why you like a band because they write in songs that you like, or you know what I'm saying? So in a way it's a team thing, you know? So if a band's excited about doing some music, well, then, you know, it's good to kind of learn some more of the new songs and hop on board and appreciate it. Cause absolutely. We've yeah. learned with COVID, they're not going to be around. How many times you look back now and go, the other thing is I hear people like, I never, I hate hearing new songs. And a lot of artists do this too. They go, I released an album. Nobody wants to hear, I, you know, nobody wants to hear my new songs. And then they also say, and to be honest with you, I'm just as guilty. When I go see Iron Maiden, they actually said this. <laughs> I want to hear all, all the songs. I don't want to hear the new album. They go, I'm just as guilty. I go, I don't know. Sure. I kind of want to hear new stuff. You know, maybe not the entire Iron Maiden album, because that's a lot to swallow when it first comes out in the first two months. You know, <laughs> exactly. Maybe maybe an anniversary might be cool when you know it for a little bit better. But but the truth is, you want to hear these songs and you're gonna be like, Oh, I heard it, you know, X by years ago. I heard this one song. It was a one-off, they played this from the album, you know, as a treat. That's fun. You know, oh hell yeah! Absolutely. I think you should keep a bunch of these songs, I and mean, maybe you throw one or two out different ones, you know, as a treat to the hardcore fans. Because I mean, I, I think we might, dude. I mean, I really, 
I really, really want to do that. Um, you know, I'm sure I'm yeah. in the minority about doing that, about, about wanting to hear the new stuff, but it's so good. I mean, I just, it's a bunch of bands that have some really good albums out. And I, I really just want, want these people, you guys have played some new stuff, you know, that was support, sure. you know what I mean? Everyone's locked up with COVID. Let's hear some Absolutely. new music. You know, it's exciting. Besides, you're going to be working on a new album anyhow. There's I agree. There's going to be a point where you can, you know, keep going. Yep. So, this is awesome. I, I want to thank you for coming Absolutely. on. I want people to check out this, check out the albums. It's fantastic. Um, I hope I get to see you live. I know it's kind of weird for bands to tour right now. Still, the, the economy and stuff. It's not not the way it used to be. But uh, well, where are the plans? I, I'm so glad that you. I I so I'm so glad that you appreciate that because, you know, back in the day we had tour buses and managers and, you know, booking agents and, you know, the labels were giving us money. And it's a lot different now, you know. Oh yeah, I've and I've burned the ears of people the, on the show by saying that I go the cost of van, the shirts. I've broken it down. I'm not going to beat everybody up. You know it. I've already said it a bunch of times. How much it costs, travel, everything. I broke it down, and I'm like, one one night in Idaho, why is he playing my town for your three friends? Then I'm going to gas money to go from one town to the other. Not only pay for the bus or the van or the sh- why is it my shirt being made? Because they have to make a run of a yep. hundred of them just to break even for your weird size. Because no one else can buy them. Like people need to realize, it's a finite business right now. It's almost like punk ethos where it's do it yourself. And at this point, if your band's out there, you need to go and buy a shirt, buy two shirts, keep the machine running. This is not even a, absolutely. Uh, a cav- it's not a caviar event anymore. These guys are in probably if you're lucky a nice van or pull along nowadays, and they're nice. You get a nice room. But you're not living high in the hog. You're you're making bills. You know, it's, it's actually a living wage at this point. So, if you want these fan and, and and getting older and getting up on stage and doing yep. this, I I don't I don't I couldn't do it. I have days I get out of bed. I don't want to go to work. I don't have to perform. So, <laughs> it's got to be some perks, to, you know, to an artist putting it out sure. there as you get older. So you know, that's well, I appreciate my, you saying that. That's my call to arms for everybody to support the artists. You know. Um, I think I cut you off. Right on. Touring plans, though. Touring plans. Let's wrap up on that one. Uh, we just got done uh, doing a Southern uh, Central American tour with Violence and Hyrax and nice. X Hoarder. Uh, we did that two weeks ago. Um, we're playing uh, September 24th in LA at the mm-hmm. CY Fest. And uh, we have some plans to book uh, West Coast. Let me see, July, August, and then East Coast. Uh, in September, so uh, we do have some stuff booked, but I really want to focus on getting back over to Europe because the metal fans there, yeah, they're freaking awesome. But well, we don't want to forget the... about America. No, but but you can you can actually make you can travel and tour and keep the band alive. Europe has kept a lot yeah. of bands alive during these lean years. You know, you're absolutely right. You know, and, and even Germany was one of the first ones to keep a lot of bands alive. When grunge came, you know, a lot of bands just stayed to <laughs> tour Germany and then all sure. the big Europe fest. I mean, there's so many out there. Um, I'll be looking forward to you. I'm up, I'm, I'm in the East Coast. So, you know.